submission that I like to use primarily to my right side is a north-south setup. Now, I talked about this a little bit before about the fact that I don't like to do everything to both sides. This has worked really well for me and I've trained it really well on my right side. So hopefully none of the competitors that I fight against are watching this. <laughs> but Burn um, the DVD immediately. <laughs> So from here, we are going to look at, again, sort of a, a scenario where I'm going to be trapping my partner's body using heavier parts of mine. So when I think about setting up the north-south, I want to think about isolating the head and isolating parts of his arm, right? I don't want his arms getting in the way. So one of the first things that I always like to do is I'll come here and I'm going to do sort of a modified uh, knee on belly or pop-up scenario where I'm going to bring my knee that's closest to Stefan's head and I'm going to actually trap it on top of his bicep. What this does is it kind of limits his movement. He's already thinking, well, wait a second, I can't move my arm, right? And it leaves his wrist very vulnerable. That's when I'm going to take my outside arm and I'm going to trap his wrist to his body. Once I trap his wrist to his body, that leaves this whole side of his head clear for me to attack. Once it's clear, I'm looking for his head to be raised up. I'm going to dive his hand underneath and I'm going to lay my ribs across his face. So from here, I've kind of pinched his face between my bicep and my rib cage. I want Stefan to look away from me. What this does is it allows me to get a very deep grip and cinch my whole armpit down. His hand is trapped against his body, so this you know, keeps him from being able to bridge and move me around too much. I don't want to have my head too high because this hand will obviously come up and protect. So I want to trap the arm and keep my head low. Once I'm here, I'm looking at starting to bring my body back. And now, as I swing my hips back, notice how I'm still applying a lot of pressure to Stefan's head. Now I rotate my body down, and I'm thinking about trying to hang his chin on my armpit, if you will, right? When I'm holding this grip, I'm actually not squeezing. I'm just applying some pressure. Hand is still trapping this arm as I push my body back. Okay, as I continue to push my body back, I want to get to the point where I feel pretty deep, still not squeezing. My hand's now going to come off of his wrist and make a grip with my other hand. My elbow is going to be tucked in close to the floor, and then I'm going to slide back even more, drop my head. So the key with this choke is really the fact that we're not squeezing the whole time. I think one of the flaws that I see when people apply the north-south is that as soon as they get their arm around the person's neck, they're like, ugh. When you squeeze too hard prematurely, what happens is your partner starts to defend the choke prematurely. And when they tighten everything up, it really it makes it difficult for you to get in and get a very tight grip. Let's try it from a different angle. So again, so from here, we're looking at a scenario where I want to start trapping this arm. So I'm going to post up, trap the bicep. My other hand's going to trap his hand against his body, and then it leaves his head clear. Once his head is clear, I'm looking to scoop, drop my rib cage across his face. I'm going to use this to shift my hips back and sink my hips back. Now notice I'm not up like this. I want to stay flat to the floor. As I sink back, I'm still trapping his arm until I get to the point where I think I'm far enough that I'm going to take my hand and come under for a palm on palm grip. I'm not posting my elbow out, I'm tucking my elbow in. And then I drop back a little bit more, relax, and squeeze. Just want to review a couple details that are really important to keep in mind. This position here where I'm going to drop my knee on the bicep, super important because I'm using a really strong part of my body against something that's going to be not as strong on Stefan's body. I once had a boyfriend who I started doing this with because I think it was just something that I made up one day. And I started trapping his bicep and he was like, wait a second, he's like, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm trapping your bicep. He's like, why are you doing that? And I was like, because it's good, I think it works. And he's like, I don't like it. And I said, well, is it illegal? And he goes, I don't know. And I said, well, then I'm just gonna keep using it. <laughs> so it's a great move for guys that are bigger than you because you're able to sort of limit a lot of their movement here, whether you're trying to maintain side control, go to mount, whatever it is that you're trying to do. I really like it because it keeps their arm in place, right? So remember, you wanna drop some pressure down there to make his hand sort of pop up so that you can trap it close to the body. The next thing that you really need to think about is applying this pressure elicits the response from Stefan where he's going to bridge his head up. You need that space in order to dive under. 
Now, if you notice, Stefan's face is turned towards me. The whole purpose here is I need to use this rib cage to make sure that his face turns the opposite way. If Stefan turns his face towards me, I'm not going to be able to finish the choke. So if this happens, roll your hip back towards you, and then you're going to roll it the opposite direction. So think about you're like a tractor trailer, and you're just going to roll your rib cage over your partner's face. Their face will turn or their face will break. All right, the last detail that we want to look at here is after I've trapped my partner's arm and I'm starting to roll my body back, watch how flat I am to the ground. I'm not giving myself any room by lifting my knee or keeping my head up or keeping my elbow posted out. I want to almost like lay like a puddle of water on the floor. So you gotta relax your body, let it settle in, wiggle back. When I'm setting up the finish for this choke, my entry with my arm has my palm facing up towards me. This allows me to really pull in my bicep and stay tight to my partner. Once I start to move my body back to get ready to finish the choke, my palm goes from facing up to facing down. My outside hand is now gonna go palm up, face towards me, and I'm gonna go palm to palm grip. So my bottom hand is up, my top hand is facing down. I go palm to palm grip with no fingers, I lay flat, close to the floor, and squeeze. I tried to do it for years the incorrect way, like, I'm pretty big, I'll just get it, and I'll squeeze, and I'll <laughs> squeeze, and I'll squeeze. I couldn't even get it on people that were smaller than me, oh, leave wow. alone people my size. Yeah. And since I started incorporating some of the details that you're talking about here, sliding back, making sure the face is turned, hooking the chin on the back of the armpit, and then sliding back, 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 and not squeezing until you've basically extended their neck and uh, taking their arms out of play, then it's really started working for me. So from the bottom of my heart, I can vouch <laughs> that this technique works <laughs> on all, and I wasn't faking those taps. Those were yeah. real taps. And it's also a great technique to use gi or no gi, sure. right? Um, you can practice it in both. And again, some people will be like, oh, well, the gi is so bulky, I can't finish the choke. If you have a really clear entry and you set it up properly, it's always going to be there for you. But again, you want to take your time with this. You can't rush it. I like to tell people maybe like a 60 to 40% ratio when, when you get the arm in place, you want to apply about 60% pressure, not 100%. You want to apply 100% when you're really flat, low to the ground, and you're actually ready to finish the choke.